In this podcast episode, Dr. Bonnie Halpern Felscher, a professor of pediatrics and adolescent medicine at Stanford University, discusses the various risky behaviors that adolescents, teens, and young adults engage in. She provides insights into the developmental aspects of this stage of life and the factors that influence risky behaviors. Dr. Felscher explains that adolescence typically ranges from around age 10 to 18 or even 21, encompassing physical, emotional, and social changes. It is a time of exploration, self-discovery, and seeking autonomy. Teens grapple with questions of identity, peer relationships, and future aspirations. The asynchronous development, where physical maturity may not align with emotional maturity, can lead to challenges for some individuals. While divorce or single-parent homes are not directly linked to risky behaviors in teens, the presence of conflict in the family environment can contribute to social and emotional issues. Positive parenting practices, such as monitoring and involvement in a teen's life, play a crucial role in mitigating risky behaviors. Dr. Felscher emphasizes the importance of parental guidance and supervision during adolescence. The advent of smartphones has revolutionized communication among teens, offering both benefits and challenges. While smartphones enable better parent-child communication and monitoring, excessive use of social media can lead to issues like cyberbullying and peer pressure. Dr. Felscher highlights the need for balanced smartphone usage and face-to-face -face interactions among teens to support healthy social and emotional development. Dr. Felscher discusses the concerning trends in nicotine use, particularly through vaping and e-cigarettes, among adolescents and teens. While conventional cigarette smoking rates have decreased, the popularity of e-cigarettes has surged in recent years. Marketing strategies targeting young people enticing flavors, and appealing product designs contribute to the high rates of nicotine use among teens. The addictive nature of nicotine, coupled with peer influence and social settings, drives initiation and continued use among youth. The addictive properties of nicotine, its cognitive enhancing effects, and the allure of flavors pose challenges in curbing teen nicotine use. Factors such as peer pressure, stress relief, and academic performance may influence why teens start and continue using nicotine products. Dr. Felscher underscores the need for comprehensive prevention efforts and effective interventions to address the rising rates of nicotine addiction among youth. Dr. Felscher points out that e-cigarette companies use marketing tactics that specifically target teenagers. By offering a wide range of appealing flavors, packaging products to resemble everyday items like juice boxes, and using colorful and playful designs, these companies attract young consumers. The goal is to make vaping seem fun and harmless, enticing teens to try these products. Despite efforts to reduce teen nicotine use, schools report alarmingly high rates of vaping among students, including elementary school children. Dr. Felscher emphasizes the urgent need for targeted interventions, increased awareness, and stricter regulations to combat the growing epidemic of teen nicotine use. One of the key factors driving teen vaping is the high levels of nicotine found in e-cigarettes. Dr. Felscher explains that newer products on the market contain salt-based nicotine, which is smoother and more absorbent than traditional free-based nicotine. This makes it easier for teens to get hooked on vaping, with some using multiple pods a day, equivalent to several packs of cigarettes in nicotine content. While e-cigarettes do not contain tar like traditional cigarettes, they do contain harmful chemicals such as aldehydes, flavorants, lead, and cadmium. These substances can have detrimental effects on the lungs and overall health. Dr. Felscher emphasizes the impact of vaping on lung function, citing cases of lung collapses, pneumonia, asthma, and seizures among young e-cigarette users. The chemicals in e-cigarettes pose serious risks to both physical and mental well-being particularly in developing brains. Nicotine is known to rewire the brain, making adolescents more susceptible to addiction. The developing brain is particularly vulnerable to the effects of nicotine, leading to long-term changes in brain chemistry. Teens who start vaping at a young age may experience difficulties with concentration, memory, and cognitive function. The addictive nature of nicotine can alter brain pathways and contribute to substance dependency. In addition to marketing tactics and addictive properties, social and peer pressure 
play a significant role in teen vaping. Dr. Felscher acknowledges that adolescents are influenced by their peers and social circles, with the desire to fit in and be accepted driving their behavior. The normalization of vaping among young people creates a culture where using e-cigarettes is seen as a social activity rather than a health risk. To address the issue of teenage vaping, Dr. Felscher emphasizes the importance of education, regulation, and enforcement. Schools, parents, healthcare providers, and policymakers all have a role to play in preventing and reducing adolescent vaping. Implementing evidence-based prevention programs, enforcing age restrictions on purchasing e-cigarettes, and raising awareness about the health risks associated with vaping are crucial steps in combating this growing epidemic. Dr. Felscher also discusses the health risks associated with cannabis use, particularly in young people. She highlights the addictive nature of this substance and the difficulty many teens face when trying to quit. The increased potency of THC in cannabis products and the potential link between high THC levels and psychosis are of particular concern. Quitting vaping, e-cigarette use, and cannabis can be extremely difficult for adolescents and teens. Dr. Felscher explains that nicotine replacement therapy, behavioral therapy, and social support are important components of quitting strategies. However, the social pressures and addictive qualities of these substances make it a complex and challenging process. It may take multiple attempts for young people to successfully quit. In addition to health risks and addiction, Dr. Felscher discusses the environmental impact of vaping and smoking. She highlights the presence of harmful chemicals in secondhand vapor and the long-lasting effects of third-hand exposure. By emphasizing the environmental consequences of substance use, she suggests that young people may be motivated to quit or avoid these behaviors. Dr. Felscher encourages the promotion of healthy alternatives and replacement behaviors for teens who are trying to quit vaping, e-cigarette use, or cannabis. Engaging in activities that align with their interests and values, such as sports, arts, or environmental initiatives, can provide positive outlets and distractions from substance use. Creating a supportive social network that values sobriety and environmental consciousness can also help young people resist peer pressure and make healthier choices. The conversation touches on the decrease in risky sexual behavior among teens attributed to better education around safe sex practices and contraceptive use. Dr. Felscher mentions that rates of teen pregnancy have also seen a decline, indicating a positive shift in sexual health awareness among young people. The podcast delves into the growing popularity of nicotine pouches among teenagers. Dr. Felscher expresses concern about the potential health risks associated with prolonged use of these products, particularly in young, developing brains. She highlights the need for more research on the long-term effects of nicotine pouches on adolescent health. Dr. Felscher emphasizes the importance of open and ongoing conversations between parents, educators, and teens about risky behaviors. She advocates for a comprehensive approach that includes harm reduction strategies, such as providing access to condoms and offering support for cutting back on substance use. Research indicates that harm reduction messages are more effective in promoting healthy behaviors among teens than strict abstinence-only approaches. Dr. Felscher underscores the need for comprehensive education that covers a range of behaviors, from no use to safe use to empower teens to make informed decisions about their health and well-being. Despite the challenges facing teenagers today, Dr. Felscher highlights the positive qualities of teens, such as their creativity, passion, and social awareness. She emphasizes the need to engage with teens in a constructive and supportive manner to address their concerns and empower them to make healthy choices. While the direct impact of pornography on the developing brain is not fully understood, Dr. Felscher highlights the potential negative effects of viewing porn on healthy sexual relationships and body image. She emphasizes the importance of promoting healthy attitudes towards sexuality and intimacy among teenagers.